introduce our speaker. <clears throat> Today, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the Reverend Dr. Rosa Maria de Silvia Machado. Ooh, say that three times fast. <laughs> Rosa was born in Boston of Portuguese parents, a special tiny and mighty gift to a family with four sons. Her first anointing by the Holy Spirit occurred as she was scalded over most of her body with coffee at the tender age of two and a half years. In her first memory of spiritual beings intervening into her life, and she continues to be reminded daily of God's grace through communing with entities from the astral planes. Rosa is a retired engineer with NASA and is a minister ordained by the American Union of Pentecostal Churches. She is a medium, health intuitive, and healer, certified by the internationally renowned John of God of Brazil with whom she traveled around the world as his interpreter. Her spirit-filled life continues to be incredible. Perhaps next time, you will discover the story behind the tomoko on her neck. Rosa's mission is to heal hearts and to facilitate the ascension of all humanity. She recently was featured in the Daytona Beach News Journal. Copies of this article are available to you upon leaving the sanctuary. She is a regular guest on Goliath Radio, AM 1380 on Rodato. <laughs> she will be traveling throughout the United States as a trainer of massage therapy throughout the month of August. She offers healing classes as her schedule permits, which you can follow on her website. Rosa's sermon today is entitled Jade, J-A-D-E, Response to Correction and Healing. Let's discover together the meaning of this acronym. I know her words will inspire you as the precious green stone many of us use in healing. Please help me to welcome Reverend Rosa Maria Machado. Thank you, Dr. Forbes. Well, it's nice to be back. It's been some time. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to be here and to see so many smiling faces. Today, we're going to be talking about the word jade. Now, a lot of us uh, realize that many words have many meanings. Most people think of jade as a stone. But you got to realize I came from an engineering background and I worked at the Space Center, so everything's an acronym. <laughs> Life is an acronym. And jade is an acronym. The word jade, how does it affect us each and every day of our lives? As I begin to unravel this word for you, you will begin to see different as aspects of yourself. Possibly, you may see aspects of another, which is always perspective, isn't it? What we see in ourselves, we see in others. Like the diamond that we spoke of in the meditation, that you are a facet of a diamond with each little notch of life experience, creating the shimmer in you. Jade is similar. Jade defined for you to understand. The first letter is justify. We go through life justifying our experience. We're justifying the concepts of others that have spoken to us. Whether they speak to us in a negative and share their experience and say, that's not what I heard. We automatically become justified in explaining that, don't we? Well, this is what I meant. We are justifying the action of our words. 
We are allowing that individual to see how we feel. And many times we're not even conscious of the reaction. Then we go to the next letter, A. We go from justifying to arguing about it. Hmm. Well, maybe you did mean that. No, really, I didn't. Well, let's get into an argument and discuss it a little bit more and see what happens. And then we move to the next letter, D. We defend ourselves. We start to see the words that are now coming back at us after the beginning of a justification that turned into a confrontation, into an argument, into something that we require to defend ourselves. And then our last word is E. We try to explain it away. Life is an experience. We are not always happy with other people have to say to us. Sometimes we come into an experience where we start to justify our existence in a relationship possibly. It doesn't matter what relationship that might be. Could it be that we are possibly a little bit narcissistic, coming from a narcissist where we're looking at some form of love that we desire for ourselves that isn't being expressed in another. But I'm sure they'll change. They can't be this way always. I'll stay a little longer and see if it happens. We justify. Many times we don't even realize that in that justification We've forgotten the love that we originally had for the person that came into our experience. We put out some kind of shopping list that said, I want these quality in my mate. I want this quality in my boss. I want these qualities in my coworkers. And I want these qualities in my colleagues. And these in my friends. Oh, they don't have this one? No problem. And what happens? Down the road, the one that they did not meet comes to the forefront. We begin to look and assess those individuals on the shopping list that we had created. Well, they have this one and this one and this one and this one. Oh, they don't have this one. How come I didn't notice that before? What prevented me from seeing that? How did I justify getting into this situation? And it doesn't matter if it comes from a situation at work, because sometimes the situation is based on financial gain, isn't it? Everybody's got to have a job. But is it a job, or is it work, or is it a vocation, or a career? The difference between a job and work and a career is a job and work, you give the power to someone else. In a career, You've chosen your path. You've defined your future. You've established the way in which you wish to get there. That is a career. You are involved in every aspect of that. And you are justifying it. Each and every moment of your day. With the choices that you make. And every day is a choice. It's often said that many are called, but few are chosen. Who does the choosing? Is it someone else in your experience? Someone that may have jaded you? That made the decision for you? Or is it your choice? Are you being guided by your inner being? Your higher power? The source, creator? Or is someone navigating you? It's a choice, isn't it? Life is a choice to be here or not, to move or not, to be in a relationship or not, 
or to go to that job that you wake up in the morning and say, oh, again, I have to go back there and deal with those people. I can share this from a personal experience. My entire life, I have been gifted with seeing spirit. I used to travel to the Space Center and shut it off. I would actually pray on my way down to the Space Center. Please turn me off so I don't have to hear other people's stuff. Thank you. On my way home, I would say, okay, then turn me on again. <laughs> I thought it was like IOL, instant on lighting. <laughs> I'm a switch, just turn me off or turn me on. And then it occurred to me one day that these were gifts that were given to me, and if I had turned them off, what if they weren't turned back on? Why did I feel that I had to justify, argue, defend, or explain who I was? When it was given to me, it was who I am. It is who I am. I couldn't change it if I wanted to. I could hide it, yes. But even in scripture it says, you cannot hide even the brightest light under a basket. Its light will make it through each and every wick so that it can be seen shining below it. I could try to hide under a rock and still you would see its illuminescence around the rock and wonder what was under it. We are all that same way. In my work experience, when I decided I was no longer going to turn it off, I was in my office. I was a manager at the Space Center, manager of quality engineering. And I was in my office and I heard screaming. And I did the mouse thing. I couldn't tolerate it any longer. I needed to know where it was coming from. So I got in the maze. I came out my office door and I went down the hall and I just followed the screen. Each angle and corner, just like a mouse in the maze looking for its little piece of cheese. I was looking for the screen. And when I arrived at a certain location, there were three women, three women that have known me for over 15 years. And I said to them, You know me, right? And they said yes. And they were very funny. One of the women did this. Yes, you do this. <laughs> Which was that stuff, you know? You can't explain it, but it goes like this. And then people change. I said, oh, well, okay, that's good enough. I said, I could hear your screaming from the office. They said, wow, that's a long way away. I said, yes, it is. But I followed it all the way to you. Here is where it led me. This woman sitting on a table, two other women sitting in their chair. And here they are, jading, justify, arguing, defending, and explaining away the gentleman who had just come into their office and shared his, what I call, schmutz. Good Yiddish word. He had just done an entire core dump on these women computer term. I like that. Huh? And I came in there and I said, let me give you an analogy. You've known me for quite some time, haven't you? And they said, yes. I said, and you like me? And they raised their eyes. I said, okay, even if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> even if you don't like me, just say yes for now. And they said, okay. And I said, so let's say I told you I was going to give you this sandwich that was filled with poop. <laughs> what would you say to me if I tried to hand you this sandwich? And promptly, each of the three women said, I would not take it. I said, exactly. You would look at me and say, Rosa, that's your sandwich, you keep it. Now, why is it that that gentleman that just marched down the hallway here, came in here, shared his experience, his justification, his arguing, his defending and explaining, and then you retaliated with justification, argument, defending and explaining? The situation. Trying to say, but I did my job. What do you mean it wasn't the right thing to do? What happens to our bodies is we begin to assimilate and absorb vibrations. 
We are a physical representation of all the experiences that we have ever had in our lifetime. Every positive and every negative. There are books written about this. Louise Hay, How to Heal Yourself. Positive and negative affirmations. She's showing you what you've been saying in the past that is negative and what you should be saying in the future that is positive to generate healing within your body. We have other books that say death and dying, where we're killing ourselves with our own behavior. And naturally, we know that this is now becoming a truth because the National Institute of Health says that 90% of all medical conditions diagnosed today are stress-based. Who is experiencing the stress? Who is infiltrating the, the stress upon your body? Who is accepting the stress as part of your daily activity? You. Each and every moment we take a time to be quiet and silent, we open ourselves to infinite possibilities of change and transformation. And here I was with these women saying, you just took all that stuff and made it yours. Everything that he said, you took ownership of. Did it belong to you? Was his problem really your problem? Was his experience or his attitude? Far be it for me to say that it was only work-based. It could have been emotional baggage from home or someone that just ticked him off for the day and he decided to come and share it with you. Life is like that, isn't it? People come and do a core dump. They share their schmutz. And now, what we do is we see patterns within ourselves. And we say, hmm, is that like me? I'll justify that one. Hmm, I could argue with that one. Oh, was she talking to me? That's like the old movie, right? Are you talking to me? <laughs> And then we try to explain it, how we feel, what's going on in our thoughts and minds. After telling that to these women, I looked at one of the women and I said, as a medical intuitive, you have this condition, this condition, and this condition. Her eyes got wide as saucers. And she said, how did you know that? I had just been to the doctor. And I said, and this one requires surgery. She goes, I go on Tuesday. I said, yeah, and that's not even yours. You decided to absorb it into your body. Similar to what Louise Hay talks of. We put it in an organ system. We're like a disk. You have a disk and you write a Microsoft Word document on that disk. And it stores it in different segments on the disk. And those segments, only when you defragment, does it pull those pieces together and say, oh, this is one unit of composition of a Word document. You are the same. I had an argument with Joe, and then I had one with Sally, and they made me feel the same way. So I'll store a little bit in my liver so I'll be a little angry later, and then I'll put some in my spleen so that I don't. And by the way, it affected the way I walk, so that step that I take next time might be a twisted ankle because it's trying to slow me down and prevent me from being where I need to be. So the concept is to look and see. Do you need to justify? <laughs> argue, defend, or explain. In the Buddhic culture, they say, be mindful of your thoughts and thinking. What is mindfulness? To catch a thought before it ever leaves you. When I said in the meditation, psychic events, those are thought forms. Everyone goes, ooh, tarot reader, spirit seer. No, a psychic event is a thought form that is directed with intention or without intention at another individual that infiltrates that energetic field of that person. The difference between that person and you is whether or not they chose to accept that vibration as a part of their being. They justified, they argued, maybe they even analyzed it. Then they defended it, then they explained it away. But they took it on. Life is like that. 
We walk around every day with choices. And being mindful is a key part of that choice. To catch ourselves and forgive ourselves for the thought that has come into our thinking, into our consciousness. To say, wow, you know, that wasn't very nice. Would I want anyone to do that to me? Would I wish to be treated in that manner? These are the concepts that were taught by Buddha, Krishna, by Christ Jesus. That's why he said, do unto others as you would have done unto you. Would you treat someone badly if you would want to be treated badly? Is that your MO? Treat me bad, I like it. Or would you hope that if there was someone that was less fortunate than yourself, that you would have the opportunity to offer something to that one less fortunate than yourself? And might find that if it were you, you would hope the same? Or perhaps you're in that situation at work. I've been in a situation in my working career since leaving the Space Center where the management of an organization literally told me, you don't need us. I didn't know that was a prerequisite. My concept was it was not a job nor work. It was my career. The answer is true. I do not need them. My thoughts were, they need me. But from their perspective, and each perspective is always different, isn't it? There are those that feel needy, and those that feel needed. How do we justify the difference? Can we argue both sides? Can we defend our decision? Can we explain our choice? Every moment of every hour of every day, we are given an opportunity to express life, vitality, abundance, character or the opposite. I love it in Brazil when I'm interpreting for Medium João and for his colleague Norberto. Norberto says you have two choices every day. You can wake up in the morning and say it's going to be a good day or a very good day. There are no other choices in his mind. How many of us wake up in the morning and say Oh, it's raining. Jeez. Again. Instead of saying, wow, I woke up. Yay. <laughs> I'm here. Thank you. We have a moment to be grateful. Actually, we have many moments. 24 hours in a day, aren't there? In a work week, 40. In a work year, 2080, math major. <laughs> but we are experiencing every moment. So when you're looking to speak to someone from your heart, your sacred space, your sacred heart, and I believe that everybody's heart is sacred. I believe that the pictures that have been drawn of saints with the halos and the hearts wide open and shimmering with light are amongst us right now. They're not just people that existed 2,000, 12 years ago. They're people that have existed throughout the ages. There are people in this room right now that are illuminated, that are shining their light so bright that they can't be hidden. They're like a beacon. And you can see it in their smile. You can feel it in their hug or their handshake or just sitting next to them. There's something about them that says, wow, there's that electromagnetic energy that says, I want some. Let me be closer to you. 
And why is that? Because like attracts like. We bring to us what we need, what we desire, what we wish to learn and educate ourselves through. Can we transform that? Yes, we have apparatuses that can assist us in that. The crystal light bed, the crystal chamber, Reiki, shifting and attuning the body. But it all starts here in mindfulness, doesn't it? Ten years ago, I was diagnosed with uterine cancer. Most people go, how's that possible? You're a healer. Well, it's to put me back into perspective. It was to wake me up. Because I was challenging myself with allopathic medicine. Now, I believe allopathic medicine has a purpose. But I believe people like those that are healers here, that are intuitive healers, I believe they have a purpose of being in conjunction with allopathic medicine. That we should be working side by side with these individuals so that they see more than the physical bo body that they're carving into. That they can see and sense that that body is alive and light and a luminescence. And that it needs to know what's going to be done to it before it's done. Instead of just saying, okay, prep them, take them down there. All right, it's done. And then having these casual conversations about whatever it is they want to talk about and assuming that the human on the table has no idea what's going on. When really we're up above going, I don't need to know about that. <laughs> Why are you concentrating on cutting me? These are choices. These are mindfulness. When you're bringing in a vibration into your daily life, Look to see if you feel jaded. To see how your inner core reacts. Be mindful of your words as you speak forth to another. Let your voice be heard, but from a heartfelt place, from a compassionate heart, from an open heart that's surrounded with love and peace and tranquility not with anger and hostility. Not in a defensive posture or one that requires an explanation. If you come from a heartfelt place, you come from truth, and truth sets you free. It is surrounded and enveloped with love. It is the essence of divinity you become the walking Christ. And the word Christ means illuminated one. For each of you are illuminated. You are not separate from the source, but one with it. And each day as you embrace that part of yourselves, you become closer and closer to it. We are in the greatest transformation this world has ever seen as our carbon-based bodies begin to be assimilated into crystalline light. The crystal chambers, the crystallite beds, these are devices that are used to assist humanity in its evolution, in its transformation. Because it's going to happen. And we are a part of it. And what a grand event it is. I am so glad to be on earth at this time. I wouldn't have missed the ride. I thank you all for coming, for being a part, and for being conscious of your mindfulness. Namaste.